Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to create Kubernetes cluster on AWS using kubeadm. This guide provides detailed instruction to set up Kubernetes cluster using kubeadm. And the requirement of this demo will be, first you should have at least two Ubuntu servers available to create the cluster. The configuration of each server should have at least two GB of RAM and two CPU cores. The server should have a good network connectivity with each other and you should also have the root access of each server. For this demo, we have created three servers on AWS in which one will be the master and the other two will be slave node. The name of these are node one and node two. So let's get started to create the cluster on AWS using kubeadm. So we will follow this installation guide, which is on Apache GitHub account. We are using the Terminus application for SSH into the machine. First, we are going to copy the command from the readme file and paste it on the server. This command is used to update the packages. So first we are running apt-get update and then we are installing apt-transport, HTTPS and cull package. Copy these commands and paste it in all three servers. Now we will install containerd on all the server. So basically containerd is a tool that manages containers on the computer. Containers are like lightweight isolated environment for running your application. Containerd helps in starting, stopping, managing the containers efficiently. So we will copy all these commands and paste it in all three servers. Now we will create the container D configuration with the help of following command. So copy paste the commands from here and paste it on all the server to run. Now we will go to our master node and we will create the configuration. We will edit the config.yml file which is inside slash etc slash container D. Here we need to find system DC group and we need to set it to true. So find this line and update the value of system DC group to true. Container D adopts system D capabilities for managing resources used by containers for better integration with system level resource management. Now we'll restart container D service on the machine because after making this configuration change, we need to restart the container D service to apply these new settings. Restarting ensures that container D is running with the updated configuration. So we need to perform this action on all the three servers, node one and node two as well. And don't forget to restart the container D on both the nodes as well. So now we will be installing Kubernetes on all the servers using these three commands. Copy the command and paste it in all the three servers. When it asks for the confirmation type yes. Now the same thing we will be doing on node 1 and node 2 as well. We will be running sudo swap of hyphen a. This command turns off swap memory temporarily. Kubernetes requires swap to be disabled because it needs to have a complete control over the memory used by the pods and containers. So swap is something which moves data to the disk when RAM is full and this can affect the performance. Now we need to enable the kernel module with the help of command sudo mod prop br underscore net filter. This steps load the br underscore net filter module into the Linux kernel. This module is necessary for Kubernetes networking as it allows Linux kernel to filter traffic coming through the bridge network which are essential for the network policy in Kubernetes. Now we need to add some settings to syscdl with the help of this command sudo syscdl-w 
net dot ipv4 dot ip underscore forward equals to one. This command enables IP forwarding in kernel. IP forwarding is necessary for routing traffic between pods, nodes, and external network in Kubernetes cluster. It allows the Linux kernel to pass the network packets from one network interface to another. Copy this command and run it on all the three servers. Now we will enable the kernel module as well. Copy the command and execute this command on all the three servers. And add some settings to syscdl. Now we will initialize the cluster. To initialize the cluster, we need to run the command sudo kubeadm init hyphen hyphen port network cidr equals to 10.244.0.0 slash 16. We need to execute the command on master node only. This command will take some time. It will initialize the Kubernetes cluster. Once we get this output, we need to save this for later use because this output will be used by the worker nodes to join the cluster or the master node. Now create a .cube directory in the home directory with the help of this command and then copy the kubernetes configuration file to your home directory now change the ownership of the file which we created earlier we'll install planner planner is a network plugin for kubernetes it should be run on the master node of the kubernetes cluster it is used to configure layer 3. Planner allows pods on different nodes on Kubernetes cluster to communicate with each other. It assigns a unique IP address to each pod and manages the network traffic routing. So copy this command to install the Planner package on your master node. Now there are ports which are running on the master node. Now we will connect to node 1 and node 2 and we'll make them join the master node. So as I said before to save the output of kubeadm join command, here is that we will copy that command and run it on node 1 with sudo privilege. So this command connect node 1 to the master and we will do the same on node 2. So we have connected the node 1 and node 2 to the master. Now we will verify that our node has been connected or not with the help of the command kubectl get nodes. It will list out all the started node which has been present on the cluster. So this is a control plane which is the master node and this is node 1 and node 2. So we have set up the Kubernetes cluster with the help of ADM. We will verify our installation by deploying an nginx pod in the Kubernetes cluster. So let's go ahead and run the command which I have got from official Kubernetes documentation to deploy nginx container. So this will deploy the three replicas of nginx. Copy this command and you can run it on either master node. So the output is that nginx deployment has been created. Now verify the pods that has been deployed or not. So get the information about all the pods. So as you can see the nginx pods are running and their status are up and running so this is the setup of kubernetes cluster using kubeadm on aws and this is a two node and one master based cluster thanks for watching